Welcome to Excel at Data Mining. My name is Billy Decker. I'm a business intelligence consultant that works for StatSlice, a consulting firm based out of Dallas, Texas. And today we're going to be discussing how to create a time series forecast in less than five minutes using the data mining add-in with uh, Microsoft Excel. So the sample data that we're actually going to be using today uh, comes directly with the add-in. Um, you can also Google for it and actually download it as a separate thing in case you lost it or you just want to take a look at the data before installing the actual add-in. And uh, what the add-in basically gives you here, it gives you uh, two separate tabs here. One of them is the data mining tab right here. And you also get an analyze tab here underneath table tools. Uh, what we're going to be using today is just the data mining tool, or data mining tab. So uh, let's jump over here to the actual forecasting tab. And uh, what we have here is an actual history of sales for the M200 model in various regions. And so to do a forecast, we basically just need two columns. We need one that basically has the values that we eventually want to forecast, and then we need another column which uh, assigns uh, basically some sort of timestamp to the actual column. Now, the timestamp doesn't actually have to be a date. It could simply it could be a simple ordering column, just like one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so now let's just get started. So we're going to come up here and we're just going to hit the forecast button. Then we're going to go ahead and skip the intro screen here. And we're going to hand select our data range like this. And then once we have that, since we selected the headers, we're going to make sure that we selected my data range has headers up here. And then we're going to go to the next thing here where we actually choose our input columns. And for this particular project, we're going to choose all of them. And then we're going to make sure that our timestamp column is properly chosen right here. So, uh, and just uh, as kind of a side mention, uh, down here, this button, the parameters button, which we're not actually going to touch in this demo, but this will actually, uh, for those of you who know a little bit more about forecasting methods and how you actually want your forecast um, to be done, there are lots of different parameters you can come in here and change. And if you click on each one, it actually gives you a nice description. And then it even has a column that tells you the actual range of the different values for each um, for each parameter. And then it also tells you the default here. But we're not going to touch that, so we're going to go ahead and skip to the next screen. And we're actually almost already done creating our model. So we're actually going to rename this just to uh, M200 Revenue Forecast. And once we click Finish here, we're going to leave everything else uh, just in default mode. And we're going to click Finish, and it's actually going to create the structure of the model, and it's going to train the model. And then after it's done with that, now we actually have our uh, data mining browser. So the first thing to notice is that we actually have two ways that we can actually explore a model, um, our data mining forecast. We have the actual charts, which gives us a nice visualization here. Or we can actually look at the equations for uh, different forecasts that we did. And we can um, have the actual equation values here, and we can find out more about them over here. So the first thing we're going to look at is just looking at the charts. Uh, one of the things I want you to notice is along the y-axis here is that these aren't actual the actual numbers used for the forecast. These are actually percentage increases based upon the actual start, uh, based upon the actual first starting value. If you want to see the actual numbers, you need to get rid of at least you need to get down to uh, just one forecast here. So we can also we can just look at North America if we wanted to, or if we want to just look at the Pacific, we can also do that. So let's put them all back up here. Uh, one of the things we can do is we can actually extend our prediction steps out. And we can actually show deviations, uh, possible deviations to our actual prediction amount here. We can see that the uh, Pacific here is much more stable than our North American and our European predictions here. So uh, one more thing is, is we can actually click on our chart and we can actually get the values along that actual line. So it gives us an actual timestamp and it gives us the values for each one. And again, we can get the actual number values by just clicking on a single one here. So then jumping to the next tab, the model tab, what this tab tells us is it gives us a nice decision tree and shows us uh, when different equations are actually used to do forecast. Um, 
they do this for every each every single one of them. Uh, the least complicated one to understand is on the Pacific amount, where it basically just uses a date to do this. So what this tells us is that before this particular date, it's using this equation over here. And then before this, or after this particular date, or on that date, it's going to be using this equation here to be able to do the forecast. And that wraps it up, and that is actually how you can create a time series forecast in less than five minutes.